Marino dating a woman that's already got kids in the Philippines. Um, first thing I want to say here is a lot of the time the women are a lot more appreciative because they've been let down in the past. Um, it's quite common for a, a boyfriend or husband to disappear. Um, drinking and gambling is big problems in the Philippines. Um, so the women can be quite appreciative of having a guy that takes on those responsibilities. Negative side, you may have a husband or boyfriend in the background that may not have completely disappeared um, and how those influences affect your partner can be quite major um, because maybe they still love them or whatever, you know, usual nonsense. But at the same time, you have to weigh that up and it can be a lot of aggravation, just not worth the bother. Or it could be that they, they're completely disconnected and nothing to worry about. But you need to consider what's going on and just confront, ask your partner, what's, where's their father, what's the, you know, get it all out in the open. It's the only way to fix all this. And if you start getting those, don't want to talk about it, it normally means they're lying. There's something else going on. And the easiest way, um, what's it? The, the best lies are closest to the truth. And I think that would be the easiest phrase to describe it. Because the fact is, you'll find that their lying is not very good. So when it starts unraveling, you'll start to think, you said something else yesterday, or that's not what you told me before. Or, you know, you start to see a pattern of lies, just walk away. It just is not worth the aggravation, because if they're lying about something simple, then, then having money or jewelry disappearing from your wallet or your, your personal belongings, that's how far it can go. You know, they could be feeding a ex-boyfriend's drug habit or whatever. Not worth the aggravation. Um, and then there is the other issue that sometimes you have to buy them off. Um, an annulment, for example, for a marriage. Sometimes you have to pay the ex-husband off um, because adultery is actually illegal in the Philippines, believe it or not. Um, but also the ex may find this as a perfect opportunity to pay, uh, get some money for nothing because they're already separated or whatever, but you still want a bit of cash. Aggro. But it depends how much you love each other. And if she's she's fine about it, don't worry about it. I know couples that are living together, their wives are still married. Uh, sorry, the wife is still married, just not to the guy they're living with. The, the expat. Um, is living with somebody who's married to somebody else, but the the marriage was separated a long time ago. But they can't get divorced for whatever reason. Annulment, sorry, you can't get divorced in the Philippines. Um, so they just live together happily. Now, issues with that, you will never get her a visa to your country as your partner because she's already married to somebody else. She might be like a Wangalay working visa and conveniently end up at your place but it's not as clear straightforward as just uh, processing as a partner same with the kids you might have to go through the adoption process to take responsibility of the children um, another extra process another expense now some countries are easier to do some are UK they just rip off Britain um, I think processing costs about two, two, three thousand pounds per person, realistically, because um, you have to go through the first um, empty wallet. Then after you go to the citizenship level, you have to pay again. Um, I don't want to do it. Uh, I'd be grudge giving the UK government tax out my pay these days because they're just leeches. Never mind paying them for something that should be my legal right for my dependents and family. So, go to Spain, aggravation is virtually zero. Getting all the paperwork done is a lot more simple. Um, 
but at the same time, like I was saying, if you have adopted kids, there's more process for your process in the Philippines, process in your country, process for immigration. Um, and I know a lot of guys don't think about this when they first get into a relationship and maybe they find out their partner's got kids a month after they've been living there or whatever. The problem you get is if you get sick. Um, you're the cash cow. It doesn't matter how you look at it, you are the cash cow. Now, I know a lot of expats couldn't care less about the kids in the Philippines. Um, and I'm being quite blunt in that, but that's the reality of it. Um, a lot of them couldn't understand why I'd bring my own kids to Europe for education. Um, when they're sitting in a country riddled with poverty and corruption, where the Philippines has become virtually a slave nation to other countries. Um, because they sell the labor cheap to float the country. You know, they, they can be working in the desert, a ship, or a hospital. I'm trying not to swear, but that ain't happening with my kids. And I don't, you know, what they do with their families is up to them. But morally, I think it's wrong. But if you got sick and you're actually a genuine person, um, you might want to head back home for better medical cover because um, even if you've got medical cover you might actually want to go home anyway because um, I I don't rate Philippine hospitals I'll be honest with you uh, like I said me and Google get on quite well um, but I wouldn't trust them with something life-threatening personally in my opinion I wouldn't trust them with something life-threatening for me um, I've seen too many times they just let the bank roll they, they know somebody's dying or whatever, but they'll just keep it rolling to get as much cash out of them as possible. So, not a nice situation to be in. And if you're the cash cow that suddenly gets sick, then everything you built up over a period of time will be wasted on medical bills. It'll just fritter away, and the old hospital's sitting there, running its corporate hands, you know, loving it. Because if you look at any of the hospitals, they're all interlinked, they're all owned, they're not. It's horrible. Uh, I think there's some free hospitals out there. I don't. I haven't used them. I haven't looked for them. Um, but personally, I'm very, very wary of Philippine hospitals. Um, and this is what I say: if you've got kids in the relationship, think about it. Um, a lot of guys from the partner point of view, if it's just a partner, they just think the wife can remarry somebody else later. Which is a sort of, not my problem, attitude, but at the same time, the, the, most of these guys are in their 60s anyway, you know, it's only about 10 years anyway, so. It, <laughs> you can't really argue with that in some ways. By the way, you're thinking, well, shouldn't you help set them up for life since they dedicate 10 years to yours? <laughs> but, just something to be aware of. Kids can be quite complicated in relationships. Also, the schooling is not free unless you send them to one of the government schools. Um, but personally, I recommend private schools and there's different degrees where you're paying from 5,000 pesos a month to 2,000, uh, what's that? I think it's about 50, 50 60,000 pesos a month um, for more of a international sort of uh, level of education but personally I think they're better off getting education elsewhere but also if you've got that thing where you're going to be dead in 10 years time or assuming you will be maybe put your partner through college get them to finish school or get them ahead you know get them a degree or something you know also a it keeps them occupied and B, they appreciate it, but C, at least when you go to your uh, uh, cloud in the sky, you've, you've left a legacy behind that will actually make sure that the family you built up in the Philippines is taken care of. Uh, 